I know something about suicide. In my own case, I've contemplated a couple of times. And I know two close friends of mine who killed themselves. Yeah, I did a video about a friend of mine who killed himself, a guy called Lightfoot. You can find that video right here. I was good friends with him. I was a close friend of his. And, uh, and I miss him terribly. He killed himself in January of 96. And I miss him uh, so much. Yeah. And like I said, I myself have thought about suicide, but to tell you the honest truth, it wasn't really serious. The first time I thought about suicide, I was about 15, okay? And I have no idea what it was about, okay? At the time, it was important, right? And you know what the suicide thought was? It wasn't so much, you know, I'm gonna kill myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end my life and end this misery. No, 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 it was more like, when I'm gone, they're gonna feel so bad about it. They're going to feel so guilty about having driven me to suicide. Yeah, and they're gonna cry. And you know, I, I started like picturing all kinds of stupid ass shit. I, I even pictured in my head what my funeral would be like, yeah? Oh man, it, now it's kind of cringe to tell you the truth. <laughs> but oddly, in the really rough times of my life, I never seriously considered suicide. And I've gone through some really rough patches, okay? Some really, really crappy patches. And uh, no, I never really did. And I consider myself fortunate because there are a lot of guys who do think about suicide. They think about suicide, some of them all the time. Some of them think of it as the only solution to their problems. And I'm here to tell you as an old fart of 50, 51, that no, suicide is no real answer. Let me explain. See, you have to understand that no matter how serious your problems might seem to you at this time, in a year or two or three, they are going to seem trivial. You are going to look back on your problems, severe though they may be, and you're going to think to yourself, you know, what was going through my head? Oh, what was I thinking? Big deal what was going on back then. That's what's going to happen. And I know this because it happens to all of us, see? The, the more you live, the more you realize that the problems that you are confronted, severe though they may be, they are transitory. No matter how serious the problem, it eventually fades. It just fades out into your rearview mirror and becomes nothing. Yeah? The earth is round and we drive across it. And as we drive on, you know, we look at a rear view mirror and all the stuff that happened behind us and it just fades, all of it, no matter how terrible. The only thing that does not fade away is death. Yeah, that's the only thing that remains, see? You kill yourself and people will remember you, yeah? But they'll feel only sadness, sometimes anger. Mm -hmm. They'll feel sadness and anger, as I do for my friend Lightfoot because they realize, as I realize, in the case of Lightfoot, that all the problems that he had at that time, which were extremely serious, they would have become nothing over time. Mm -hmm. And just a couple of years would have changed things around for Lightfoot, for yourself, for anyone you know who's thinking about suicide. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that young guys don't understand because they're young, they haven't lived long enough. Mm -hmm. They don't realize, you might not realize, that however bad things might, might be, enough days pass and that problem will be insignificant. Mm -hmm. And you will realize too something else that not many people tell you, that the rough patches that you are experiencing, the times that you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel, the times, the days when you're really thinking about killing yourself, mm -hmm. Those days, precisely those horrible days, are the ones that later you're gonna be grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in my own life of the good days, I think of the, those days when I made a ton of money, right? Or I, I banged the hot model or whatever. And those days were nice, but the better days, the ones that I really remember and that I savor, were the crappy days, where the, where the days where things were awful. Mm -hmm. One of my fondest memories of my life in Los Angeles when I was trying to make it as a writer right out of college, right? When I was like flat broke and I didn't have any contacts, any, 
any way into the business, right? And I was flat broke. I was so broke that one time I uh, figured out that the cash I had on hand, right? You know, I, I cut off a p bit of money for gasoline because I had this crappy temp job up in Burbank working at the Disney Corporation. And I cut off some money for cigarettes because I needed cigarettes to survive, right? And what was left was like five bucks. And that was supposed to last me 10 days. And I had to buy food for 10 days with those five bucks. And so what I wound up doing was that I went and bought this five pound bag of rice. And then I went over to this Burger King that was nearby. And I snagged like a bunch of little packages of ketchup and mayonnaise. And I survived on boiled rice with mayonnaise and ketchup mixed in, you know, and this concoction, just eating these calories for 10 days, right? And I felt so miserable at the time, right? I felt so miserable. I hated my job. I hated, uh, you know, the life I was living. I was so lonely. It was just so miserable. And retrospectively, those were oddly the best days of my life. Yeah, they were the best days of my life because they taught me resilience. They taught me the limits of what I could endure. Mm -hmm. There have been much rougher patches than that, by the way. And every single one of those rough patches, those really, really horrible days, right? They pushed me as far as I could go and they taught me the limits of my endurance. Uh -huh. And they taught me something very important, see, that my endurance is far more than I thought. Mm? That I can take a lot more than I realized, just as you can. Huh? You're going through a rough patch now, you're thinking of killing yourself. Mm? You gotta think to yourself, rather, not about ending it, but rather, can you take it? Can you take one more day of this? Huh? Can you? No surprise, you will find that you can. Yeah. Just one more day. Uh, you're thinking about killing yourself. You're, you've said to yourself, I'm going to off myself. I'm going to take these pills, you know, and, and down the pills with like a fifth of bourbon or whatever. And, you know, it's going to be the sweet hereafter. That's how I'm going to off myself, right? Suppose that you've come to that because, you know, your situation is awful, right? Your, your situation is awful and, and it's the pain. And it's just awful and blah, blah. Okay, I'll, I'll grant you all of that. You got it all set, right? Okay, well, why don't you set yourself the task of like, can I make it one more day? Can I tough it out for one more day? Mm -hmm. Just see if you can. I'll bet you, you can. See? Now, you'd be surprised. You can tough it out a lot longer than you think you can. Huh? And if you keep on thinking that way, can you tough it out? How many days can you tough it out? Huh? You'll notice all of a sudden that the problems that you were having, they were slowly begin to diminish. Mm. My buddy Lightfoot, I knew him real well. Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly why he killed himself because he was going through a very rough time and I'm not going to get into it. It's, it's so long and to tell you the truth, it still pains me terribly to think that he is gone. But go to the video that I, I linked before to see it, to see my discussion of it. But the point, see, I know that he was tough enough to handle one more day. And he was tough enough to handle one more day of the misery he was experiencing at that time in January of 96. And if he'd handled just one more day, which he could have, if he'd wanted to, one more day after that, and then pretty soon it would have been a downward slope of misery. Mm -hmm. It would have been a downward slope of misery, and eventually he would have had a good day. A good day insofar as his life is concerned, a good day getting his shit back together because he'd made a hash of his life for reasons that are in that video. And slowly he would have climbed back up. And in short order, you know, his life would have been aces. Oh yeah. I was telling you about how I was going through this patch of misery of eating like uh, <laughs> rice with ketchup and mayonnaise for 10 days, right? <laughs> Broke as fuck, right? I was telling you about that. You know, like less than a year later, I was a millionaire. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. Less than a year later, I was sitting on seven figures. Yeah. Hmm? Life changes that fast. Life changes incredibly quickly. And you'd be so surprised at the misery that you're feeling today. And in just a year's time, which is nothing, just a circle around the sun, in a year's time, it's all different. You don't believe me? Well, think about a year ago. Huh? You're miserable now. You want to kill yourself now. Your life is shit, you know? 
maybe you're in prison, you know, and getting raped every day, or, or maybe, I don't know, something horrible is happening, right? Whatever the fuck it is, whatever, no matter how awful it is, you're in a Turkish prison getting raped every day. That's pretty goddamn awful if you think about it, yeah? And you're thinking of killing yourself because you're in a Turkish prison, you know, getting raped every day, right? Ask yourself the following, what was it like a year ago? How was my life a year ago? Hmm? Ask yourself. Ask yourself, what was my life a year ago? And a year ago, could I imagine that I'd be in this position? That I'd be in, in this misery right now? Hmm? Ask yourself. What you'll realize, of course, is that a year ago, your life was completely different. And not in a million years could you have you know, imagined the life, the misery that you'd be experiencing now one year in the past. Of course not. Because we, we can't see the future. We can predict you know, bits and pieces of it, right? But we really cannot see the future. And sometimes our life takes a nasty left turn and we go down the tubes. And a year ago, everything was aces. And a year later, it's misery. Hmm? It's misery and you're thinking of offing yourself. But see, reverse the process. If your life was so totally different a year in the past, imagine what your life might be a year in the future. Imagine toughening it out. Mm -hmm. Imagine just putting up with getting raped every day in the Turkish prison that you're in. Mm -hmm. Imagine it. Yeah, it's not pretty. It's not fun. Of course not. It's nothing to laugh at, quite frank, frankly. But imagine you just gut it out. You just toughen it out uh, day after day. Do you think that in a year's time your situation will not improve? Do you think that in a year's time, or let me phrase this, do you think that you are your life? Is a prison such that it cannot change? Huh? Of course it's gonna change. Of course! Life always changes. That's the beauty of life. Life changes spectacularly. Huh? Sometimes it changes in ways that are completely uh, predictable, known. Huh? I mean, you're, I don't know, like a, a junior in college and a year later you're a senior with your diploma getting ready to go out in the world, right? That's very predictable, right? In other ways, well, you know, one day you're eating um, rice with ketchup and mayonnaise and a year later, you know, you're a millionaire having a time of your life, right? Yeah, you cannot tell how life will change. Mm -hmm. And so if you're miserable now, you have to be thinking of that. You have to be thinking to yourself, a year from now, where am I going to be? Five years from now, where am I going to be? I'm 51 right now, right? You know, like, if I'd asked myself, like, at 25, uh, where I'd be at 50, I had something completely different in mind. Totally different, right? I could never have imagined the life that I've led. I could never have imagined the ups and downs that I'd have. Yeah? You can't predict it. But what you can do, and this is a message to you if you're thinking of killing yourself today, what you can do is toughen it out. Just one more day. Huh? If you can say to yourself that you can tough it out, out, that you can make one more day, that you can just grit your teeth and plow through this miserable day and not kill yourself, well, then suicide is no answer now, is it? Now, I'm not going to go through this bullshit of like uh, shaming a guy who wants to commit suicide and, oh, it's the coward's way out, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. It's not the coward's way out, but it is the way out of somebody who is... Well, quite frankly, immature. You're young, you're thinking about suicide, and you're thinking to yourself, your life is misery. Well, you're thinking that because you're too young to realize that you might be right now at the bottom of the sine wave, at the trough of your life, and that in very short order, it'll turn around, and it will turn around. And I can tell you this, not because I know your life, I certainly don't. I can tell you this because I've seen it so many times in every circumstance, in the past, in the present, people I know, in my own life, life goes up and down. And what is valuable about life and the reason those days of misery that you might be experiencing right now, the reason those days are so valuable is because the measure of the worth of a life is not how many good days you had. No. The measure of a good life is the difference between the really, really crappy days when you want to kill yourself 
and those beautiful shining days at the top. When my daughter Veronica was born, right? She was born by cesarean section, right? Uh, and so I was watching the operation and, and the way a cesarean section happens, uh, they usually put like a screen in front of the mother and so she can't see anything. Probably because it would freak her out if she saw how bloody and messy the whole thing is, right? So my daughter Veronica was born, right? And all of a sudden there was this gush of water, the amniotic fluid popped open, right? And this purple wriggling thing screaming her head off popped out. It looked like a fucking alien for crying out loud. I mean, it looked exactly like an alien, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> you know, and she popped out and there she was born, purple, you know, because all babies are purple. Very purple, by the way, shockingly purple. I, it was so much, it was such a shock that I, I couldn't say anything, you know, because I was so surprised. But I thought, is she okay? And perfectly normal. It was a perfectly fine delivery, perfectly normal in every regard. And it was, I, I have to say it, it was one of the happiest days of my life. And I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You don't realize the great days. Yeah. You only realize the great days and the shitty days retrospectively. Mm -hmm. And you only realize that that variance between the, the best days and the worst days once they're behind you. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives you a measure of your life. You're thinking of killing yourself. I don't want you to kill yourself, of course not. But I do want you to remember this day this miserable, horrible day where you're thinking of killing yourself. I want you to write down every little shitty detail of this horrifying day that you're experiencing that's driving you to think about suicide. I want you to write every little detail. Hmm? And I want you to keep, keep that account somewhere safe so that you can read it in a year's time, two years time, and 10 years time. I personally regret not having written down all the, the relevant information of the shitty days of my life. Yeah, those, those days were really, really miserable. Those days when I was just, I can't go on. I must go on, I will go on. Mm -hmm. Those days, I regrettably did not write down an account of those days. And I regret it because I wish I could relive those days. And you're thinking of killing yourself now because your day is miserable. Your day is just, you can't take it anymore. You will be shocked to realize later how much you will miss these days because they will define your life, the life that you will lead after. Don't throw away this opportunity because it is an opportunity. You're thinking of killing yourself. That misery that you're experiencing, that's the bottom, you know. Wait around a few years and then you'll hit the top.